Um, I will note that Miss uh, Churchill has basically prevented the father from being a father since the birth of these children. From her own testimony, she never really let him alone with the kids from birth. She never allowed him to become a father. She never allowed him to learn how to be a father. You can't set this up and then blame the other side for its consequences. That's not allowable in the law. You don't get to kill your parents and come to court and blame your, blame, and throw yourself on the mercy of the court for being a, an orphan. Um, you can't set him up to say, you're not seeing the kids, I'm not trusting you with the kids, I'm not leaving you with the kids, and then complain that he's not involved in the kids. The fact that he was gone for a year, from testimony, I could kind of understand the frustration of the only time you get to see the kids is if it's under your control, ma'am. That kind of control is going to push somebody away. I'm still not giving him any credibility because he did go away for a year. But still, there was also a year that he was fighting for this and has been, and it's been delayed by the court and by adjournments and by other things. So some of that is everybody's responsibility, not just his. But in that time, he also has gotten married and has children living with him, and there are no CPS reports there. There's no complaint and no testimony that there's any problems there. The threatened or actual detention of the child and the intent to retain or conceal the child. So far, the factors have been pretty well even. This one does go against the mother. Mm. The detention is not just the removal of the child or the hiding of the child. It is the restriction of the child. As oh, noted in a previous um, finding, the mother has restricted this man's parenting time since his birth. The court will not turn him into a sperm donor. It's not going Nicole. to happen. Continuing his she mad. Uh, she continued big mad. supervised parenting time would be invalid, an invalidation of laws of the state of Michigan. It is presumed to be in the best interest of these children. He is no danger to these children. You complained at first that he didn't know the children. There are pictures indicating he does. There was a time period he was gone. I will note that he has, home. Case he has a home. He has a place for them to be. Guys. It is not perfect. Mom has a great place for them to be. I'm not sure who she lives with other than the three children. I know that her mother and father are very involved. I don't know if she lives with them or not. There was no testimony as to that. I did meet with the children. I met with them in their individual bedrooms. They are very great children. They are very nice. But the court has grave concerns about how they talk about their father. Mm. Really grave concerns. Look at her face. And it goes to a potential interference or just an ability of the mother to not effectuate the father as to being a father. Oh, Some of the shit. things those children said were problematic. Mm. There are other words I would be called to use, but no, they're indicative of a parent that is not facilitating a relationship with the other parent. That violates the inherent rights of the children not to be not to have either parent disparaged by either party or third parties. I am gravely concerned about the ability of the mother to make sure that the father becomes a father. Oh, you chose him, shit. not me. And sir, don't complain about her either. You chose her. So I have concerns about her facilitating this and under the threat or actual detention, the detention would be the inability to facilitate that a relationship. So at this point, I do find that there is no clear and convincing evidence. There is not even a preponderance of the evidence to prevent the father from having normalized parenting time. Now that doesn't happen automatically. Some judges would just say, look, next weekend he gets every other weekend starting next weekend. We're not going to do that. This court works in the best interest of the children. So let me see if I can move this. I know the father tried to get the children to meet his current wife, which should have easily been done. Again, the warning that was given to you on June 3rd was, you control this or I will have to. Mm. I gave you the opportunity, and it's been more than a year, and this should have only taken six months. So there will be four Saturdays with no supervision, although I'm going to alter that just slightly because I've been thinking about this for the past two days. My initial notes said four Saturdays with two hours of no supervision. That first time, I'm going to allow the supervisor to be there to help facilitate the meeting of the stepmother with the children, Mr. Tenhor, and possibly the step siblings. These people need to meet. So let's do that first one with the supervisor. 
pursuant to Tiedemann versus Tiedemann, the court speaks through its written orders. This is going to take a few days to write that order. This order will begin parenting time of this nature. It'll stay supervised until this uh, parenting time begins by my verbal order, which will take the same effect as a written order pursuant to Tiedemann versus Tiedemann. And that would be the first Saturday will be on the 15th because I want some time so that the kids are prepared. Um, that first Saturday would be the two hours. Mom will drop them off and mom will pick them up for these first four Saturdays. The supervisor may be there to help facilitate the meeting of the stepmother and or step siblings. Then there will be three Saturdays of two. Again, mother is driving these first four sessions. 